So Dan, what are we doing here? Well, I'll tell you, Glenn, this is a tailstock. Okay, and the tailstock is what? Well, it, it uh, doesn't hold any tails up, but it holds a part up. Okay. This happens to go in an OD grinder. OD grinder is uh, outer diameter? Right oh, okay. right so, outside diameter. So, this thing was really sloppy. To give you an idea, this hole, which the shaft goes into, okay. was way oversized. It was like 6,000 slop in there, which is a tremendous amount that we don't need. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Secondly, this is not supposed to look, see this side right here? Wow, that really got butchered That's up. It's supposed to look like that all the way around. Oh man. So we're going to make a new one of these. Okay. We can't fix this. And this piece goes on the end. Well, we'd cause something to bust like that, just... No, it's wear, you know, it's wear just, just abuse on a machine and yeah. uh, it's been like that for years and they've tried to fix it here with a washer. That didn't work too well. No. So that State goes sloppy. like this. And that's supposed to be like so. Oh wow. But it's not then, supposed to be up. Oh, okay, I see where it's broken. And yeah. then this is supposed to go in here. And then the grinding wheel was over years ran into this okay. as this went in and out. Okay. And it wore all this stuff out. So we're going to make this part, not the washer, that's that's a band-aid. Okay. We're gonna make this part, we're gonna hone this out, make it straight again. Then we found that this handle that goes in here was sloppy in the pin. This is what the pin ended up looking like. Okay. And it should be straight, like so. Oh wow, look at that. So we're gonna bore this out. We're gonna refit this, bore that out. We've already milled this slot. So okay. now we're gonna make a shim to go in there okay. to tighten it up. So that's the project. And we're excited when about- When you bore this out and you make another one of these stock- We'll make it to size. To si okay. We'll make it to the new size. The new size. And we've already checked it here. It's got a little bit of a taper in here, like this, it's, but it's, well actually it's this way. It's about 3 thousandths big, uh, 3 thousandths higher on this end than that end, but that isn't gonna make any difference. Didn't your guy get it within tenths? Yeah, but we're not gonna need it that close. And we could machine the bottom, but oh, for okay. this, for application purposes, this thing is pretty good. We're not gonna need to do much to it. Sure. So that's our project, and we're kinda excited about doing it. So again, we're gonna remake this part, remake this part. We've already done the handle. We ground this down, yeah. board this out, make a shim for that, which we're gonna do, and put it all back together and put it on the machine and see how this baby works. All right, you don't need to paint it again, do you? Why, are you the painter? <laughs> uh, and, and by the way, I just wanna make sure. Oh can man. You, can you see me now? It looks like he's gonna land somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> These are pretty cool, aren't they? They're awesome. So you know, yeah. if you're up close, if you're up close and personal, they got those hats now with them too. You know, on the brim. Yeah, but I don't wear no beanies. No, I don't do beanies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're out of here. We're gonna go do this project. So our first step is we're gonna make this cap, right? And we'll come back and show it to you. Awesome. So let's roll. All right, let's go. Let's go. That Whoop. way. <laughs> All right, so I found a piece of stock that would work for for this particular job. And I'm checking the diameter here just to make sure that uh, uh, that we've got enough stock to remove, which we do. And the outside dimension really doesn't matter much. It's strictly uh, non-dimensional. It doesn't mean anything. You notice how shiny the part is here with this carbide insert we're using, which is great. Now, the, when I take the second cut, which you're going to see in a moment, it's a little duller in the finish because with this particular insert, it doesn't like to take small cuts. That's probably about a 10,000th cut. But that's okay, because the finish, again, is not, not that critical at this point. And after we're done with, uh, with the OD, uh, we're going to come in here, we're going to center drill it, drill it, and do all that stuff. And I like that size. Again, it's non-dimensional. So here we are doing the center drill. And then we're going to change a bit, put in a next size drill. And then we're going to do another drill after that, which will be a little bigger. And then we're going to start with a boring bar. So it's all kind of cool. And by the way, I, I love the, the little blonde, and I love working on it. It's a lot of fun. I've always liked lathe work ever since I was a kid. And again, we're going into a blind pocket here, so I gotta be careful I don't go too deep uh, because we gotta go up against the shoulder. Now here we're gonna face it off, zippity-doo, there you go. Change the tool, we got a boring bar in there. Now we're gonna bore it out, and uh, you'll see the chips flying. Now that looks like sparks, but it's really not. It's uh, just the, the reflection of the light on the chip. And uh, you'll see here that 
I'm going in and coming up against a shoulder like I mentioned. I already checked the depth so I know exactly how deep I need to go. And we skipped a couple steps here just to speed this baby up a little bit. And there you go, now up against the shoulder one more time. And uh, there we go. And I'll finish up the face. You can kind of see in a corner of the video, you can see where it's at there. And now we're done. So now we're going to drill, tap, and ream to put our carbide inserts in there uh, to protect the part from being damaged if it should strike the grinding wheel. So there we go. Done with the reaming and we're done. One of the things that really ticks me off is that this department, which is rarely used, it's really a tool room lay that we don't do production machining back here, but you can't find anything. You know, I'm looking for, I spent probably 75% of my time yesterday trying to find the right tools, and I didn't get the right tools. I had to buy some, and even with that, I still didn't have everything I needed, but we wanted to get this done and move on. So. What I said to the guys was, we need to get this department organized so we don't have all this wasted time. I'm, I'm, I'm about not wasting time. You know, I'm not a late hand. I mean, I've been back here in 40 some years, so you guys that are uh, old timers, you need to forgive me because I haven't been back here running late. I mean, I still get it, but I would have, if I had to do this part over again, I'd do it differently and I'd do it a lot faster. But with the lack of experience that I've had over the years and the lack of the right tooling, I made good with the, with the, I did the best I could with what I had. But we got to organize this department. So no matter who comes back here, they have all the tools that they need, no matter what they're doing, unless it's some exotic job. But you know, if it's just general laid work, we got to have everything we need. We didn't have it. So that was really frustrating. And then the, the, the drill chuck that we had, you know, it didn't work right. Uh, we had problems with it spinning. It was just a nightmare. But anyway, we got the job done. So. I'm, I'm through with my frustration. Thanks. Well, Glenn, we did it. You got the part? We got, I got the part. You want to see it? Yeah, I want to see it. It's pretty cool. It looks good. Wow. Nice and shiny. It's actually thicker on the inside, too. Yeah? Well, you know, it's really a little bit thicker, but it's about the same. Okay. Anyway. That looks nice. What are the holes for? Good question. Well, you know how this was getting worn from the wheel hitting it? Right. We're going to put some carbide inserts in there. Going to drop them in. Now the carbide wheel it is very hard, so if the wheel hits it, it's not going to grind apart. Oh. It'll, it, the carbide will prevent, prevent it from being ground. Is that something so you thought of, or is that yeah, no. normal? This guy's a genius. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> but that's you being generous. And then we sat and chromed this, which we didn't have to do, but we had oh, this. Okay. We had this hard chrome. So and then that part ends up fitting over here like so. Oh, okay, perfect. That's Look the idea. That. Is that, that cool? Is, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. isn't that cool? And it's, it's supposed to be sloppy. Where's the, uh, the the uh, piece that goes inside? That's this one. The stock, yeah. You have many? That is going to be our next project. So we're going to do this part next week. We're going to show you how we did it. And we're going to we're going to actually, I'm going to turn it on a lathe, do the thread, do the uh, uh, number two brown and sharp taper okay. that's in here. Where do those holes connect in the on this? They don't. Oh, they don't? Nope. That just goes in there like so. Okay. All right. Well, you'll get to see it when we put it right. all together. You'll, get, you'll see how we did it. So that's the story. And uh, stay tuned for next week because we're going to do this whole shaft from beginning to end. Slot, thread, taper, through hole. It's going to be a lot of fun. We want to thank everybody for watching and for your kind letters and, re and, and comments. And uh, we're going to be back next week to do it all over again. Yeah. So thanks for watching.